The first step in using the electromagnetic simulation capabilities that are built into Microwave Office is creating an electromagnetic structure. This can be accomplished by clicking on the New EM Structure button on the toolbar. The program will then prompt you for a name. In this case, we are going to simulate a spiral inductor, so type in the name Spiral. If you have multiple EM simulators available, you can choose the one you want to use. We'll be using AWR's EM simulator, EM site, for this example. Click on Create and a new structure is created. Conductor material can be defined by locating the enclosure icon in the project view and double clicking on it. Click on the Material Defs tab and click the Add button next to Conductor Definitions. Click on the Presets drop down menu and choose Copper and click OK. Now click on the Materials tab where you can choose material names, thicknesses, and definitions. Change the 1 ounce copper and half ounce copper material definition to copper. Then click OK. Dielectric layers can be defined by double clicking on the enclosure icon and selecting the material defs tab. Click on the add button next to the dielectric definitions table to add a new dielectric material. Choose alumina from the preset drop down menu. Now click on the Dielectric Layers tab. Additional layers can be added by clicking on the Insert button. Define a structure with a 10 mil alumina substrate. Add 10 mils of air above that and 100 mils of air on the top. At the bottom of the window we can set the enclosure boundaries. EM site assumes the four sidewalls to be perfect electrical conductors. The top and bottom boundaries can be perfect conductors, an open boundary condition, a specific material, or an infinite waveguide. In this case, we're going to simulate with the cover off the box. And we do that by selecting approximate open for the top boundary condition. For the bottom, ba bottom of the enclosure, we will leave it as a perfect conductor, which will be the bottom ground plane for our microstrip structure. Click OK when finished. The next step in using the electromagnetic simulator is defining the enclosure. Find the enclosure by locating the structure you just created, and underneath it, double clicking on the icon called Enclosure. Click on the Enclosure tab. We will leave the X dimension at 500 mils with the grid spacing of 5 mils, giving us 100 divisions. Change the Y dimension to 250 mils, leaving the grid size at 5 mils, which will give us 50 divisions. We will now define our electromagnetic structure. Be sure to select the proper layer to draw on when drawing the conductor materials. Click on the Layout tab on the bottom left and select Physical Layer 3 from the drop-down menu. We are choosing Layer 3 because we want to draw on top of the alumina substrate. You should also select half-ounce copper for the material. A variety of icons are available to assist in defining conductor materials. To start drawing our structure, choose the rectangular conductor icon from the toolbar and drag a conductor to the dimensions that we choose. Editing conductors can be accomplished by double-clicking on them and selecting any of the stretch lines and changing any of the dimensions of the conductor. A useful command for adding arbitrary shapes is the polygon conductor icon, which looks like a blue T on the toolbar. In this case, we will use it to define our spiral inductor. Vias can be added to your structure by going to the toolbar and selecting the Via button. Draw a Via just as you would any other structure. It may also may be useful to view your enclosure in a 3D view to see the direction and position of your via. To add a port to the edge of a structure, you must first locate a conductor that ends on the edge of the boundary condition, such as this conductor. Select the conductor and then find the icon labeled Edge Port. Next, bring your cursor to the edge of the box where the conductor meets the boundary condition and click when the object is highlighted. 
DM site supports a de-embed in capability. It allows you to remove the reference planes from the edge of the box to anywhere inside the box. In this case, we click on the edge port and drag the reference plane into the box, which means this piece of transmission line will automatically be de-embedded from the structure. We can define the frequencies that we want to analyze, either locally by using the frequency block within the spiral structure, or globally by selecting the global frequency block. In this case, we're going to use the local frequency block. So right-click on your structure and choose Options. Click on the Frequencies tab and uncheck the box which says Use Project Frequency which would be checked if we were using the global frequency specifications. In this case, we'll specify a sweep from 5 GHz to 20 GHz in steps of 1 GHz. Note that the range is not set until we click the Apply button. Click OK to finalize our frequency set. To analyze the electromagnetic structure, click on the Analyze icon, which looks like a lightning bolt. That will activate the electromagnetic solver. EM site can display the currents and also the E fields within a structure. To begin animation, right click on the structure and choose Add Annotation. Choose EM current for the measurement and leave everything else as default and click OK. Open the 3D view of the structure, zoom in, and you can click on the play button to begin the animation. Red and yellow areas indicate high current and dark areas indicate low current. Green cones indicate the direction and magnitude of the current as well. You can pause and stop the animation using the other VCR style buttons on the toolbar. Quantitative results from the analysis can be performed by choosing the new graph button from the toolbar. In this case, we'll be using a Smith chart. Now click the Add Measurement button to bring up the Add Measurement dialog. In this case, we'll be doing a port parameter measurement and add S11 to the graph. Click Simulate to see the results.